Hey, Dan here with Sweet Maria's. Just wanted to make a quick video to go over how to um, diagnose and replace the afterburner in your Be More Coffee Roaster. Everything I touch on here <clears throat> relates to both the 1600 and 2000 machines. Um, before I get into it though, I just wanted to really quickly touch on what the function of an afterburner is, which uh, it's set up to um, incinerate any smoke or odor or emissions that um, are a byproduct of coffee roasting. You tend to see them on larger commercial roasters, um, and depending on the area you live in, uh, laws and regulations might dictate that you have to have one uh, on a machine that's above a certain batch size. <clears throat> you don't see them as often on smaller home roasting machines, but the Beemore does have one. Um, this is actually what it looks like. It's just this little ceramic square that has uh, some coiled wire wrapped around it. And this gets really hot, and as your uh, beans start to um, smoke, this is supposed to burn up some of that smoke before it exhausts out the back. Even when they're working, uh, you do get a bit of smoke with the Beemor. Um, if you have one, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I'll be quite honest, uh, I didn't know until we had a recent inquiry from a customer about how to diagnose a failed um, uh, unit that uh, in looking at my own machines, I realized that my 1600 um, that's been upgraded with the panel, um, that the afterburner had failed in that machine and I was still using it just fine. So if you do uh, have, if, you're, if your afterburner has failed, you can still roast coffee. It just might be a little bit smokier than normal. So the first step is diagnosing if your afterburner has failed or not. And that's really easy. Um, the afterburner should kick on at different points during your roast, but it also engages as soon as you enter the cooling cycle. So um, if you hit the cool button on your uh, Beemore, you should be able to look up right in this grate here and see the coils on the afterburner glowing within 10 to 20 seconds. If you don't, uh, it's probably no longer working. The good news is Beemore sells these and they're $25, I believe and we've linked to that product uh, in the description below. So you can go this job requires very few tools, a Phillips screwdriver for removing a few screws, and I like to have a little um, flathead screwdriver on hand um, in order to undo the two spade clips that connect to the afterburner. So let's go ahead and dive in. Accessing the uh, afterburner requires removing both side panels and then the screws along the top of the back panel so you can gain access to the rear of the afterburner where the spade clips are connected. Those will have to be disconnected first before we can remo remove the unit. I don't have a left panel on my BMR because I have a probe in that side, um, but I'm going to go ahead and remove this right side first um, and then we'll remove those back screws. I've already taken the screws out of this. There's one here. We have two in the back and two underneath. Once you remove those screws, you have to slide it forward in order to um, clear these clips that, um, sorry, these little slotted clips that lock in at the top and the bottom. And then you have your, I'm going to go ahead and move this down. You have your fan here that uh, is connected to the uh, circuit board. And I like to go ahead and disconnect that so I can just move this panel out of the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, four screws on the top back of the machine. With the screws out, you can now lift up the back panel, but you don't want to lift it off altogether. Um, it's connected in the front. You just want to get about an inch and a half of clearance in order to um, access those spade clips. This is a little hard to see, so I'm just going to show you what to do, and then I'll probably do the work off camera. But you need to pull these little sheaths back in order to gain access to the spade clips. Now the spade clips have a little tab that needs to be depressed. Let's see if I can do this, it's a little dark. But you depress the tab and then you gotta pull them out. Yeah, I'll have to do it off camera so I can see a little bit better with some lights. I'm gonna pull both those back and then I will um, undo those clips. Now with both of them removed, Go ahead and pull them back a little bit. We can turn the machine around and uh, remove from the other side. Okay, so now we're going to remove the two screws in the front of the um, afterburner cover. This will just slide or it will pivot down and we can slide the afterburner out. So it kind of helps to have a little shorty screwdriver for this. 
with the screws out, you can just drop this down and it just slides right out. And it looks like we found our culprit. You may have noticed these little uh, metal brackets. We need to slide those right back into place in the new unit. And there are two little slots on both sides that they just fit right in. And these are gonna hold the afterburner in place in the little tray. So now that we have that removed, we can add it to the tray and remount it in reverse order. Remember that the little screw holes go towards the front of the machine and therefore the tabs need to be facing backwards. So we're gonna drop this in the tray just like that. I was able to button it up uh, with very little effort. Um, the little tabs just slid in um, pretty easily actually. And uh, the spade clips are reconnected and you wanna make sure to push the insulation up over the spade clips. So we're gonna go ahead and test it. I'll hit the cool button and the afterburner should come on in just a few seconds. See it glowing underneath. So that's it, uh, not much to it. And if you find yourself with a burnt out afterburner, uh, just follow the link in our comments to uh, buy another one for 25 bucks from BMore and uh, follow these simple instructions and you'll be back up and running in no time. Thanks.